My short answer to the video title, I've chosen reactor blocks over the free version VCV rack, right? Shame on me and this, even if VCV rack is available for free and has a ton of modules, right? But the question you probably ask is why? Why did I choose reactor blocks, the paid one over VCV rack, which is free? That's exactly why I want to make a video about these reasons. The main core reasons why I've chosen reactor blocks over VCV rack as a modular beginner, right? Hey friends, Luano here from roughinstudio.com. If you ever had a tiny little thought about to get started with modular synthesis but felt uh, overwhelmed by all the options out there, this video is for you. Should you go with VCV rack? Should you go with reactor blocks, paid versus free? And yeah. In this video I want to share my main reasons and strategies to start with modular synthesis, right? First I need to mention a little background story. So I bought complete, I guess, 11 back then when I was a student at Point Blank Music School. So I got it for a discount price and there was reactor already included, right? But I never really used it until a couple of weeks ago where I felt a little bit stuck and I fought or I dabbled around with some presets from reactor uh, blocks and I got quite great results that fitted my taste and style of music. So I thought, okay, maybe this is the, the strategy to go, maybe to go modular. And that's what I want to go right now and start doing. And I also want to explain some strategies that I want to follow to learn the most efficient way with reactor blocks. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start with uh, four, four reasons, I guess, yes. Four reasons why I've chosen reactor over VCV rack to start with modular, right? I'm talking about starting, right? Okay, let's play quickly that track. <laughs> Just some simple idea that I came up with. Now, let me show you what I created. Re really simple patch with the uh, reactor. It's this little bass line. And I was testing out different bass lines, right? I went with this one and then I evolved it with something like a texture kind of thing, I don't know, just to fill up the space a little bit. It's the same sequence basically. up just as a little background uh, glue element okay now so let's switch over to reactor and then I can show you why I really like reactor blocks so now this is the patch really basic base patch let's quickly play that Pitch is a little bit different than the one that I recorded here, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's start with the first reason. And this is one of the biggest, I would say. And it's, it's amazing. <laughs> and the first reason is it serves as a tutorial somehow, you know. So as you can see, really simple patch here, right? So here I have a sequencer and an oscillator. I don't know what this is and here comes the power if I just this little button here is the big power and I don't know if VCV rack has something similar 
if you know if it has then maybe I would switch to VCB rack I don't know probably not but <coughs> switch this on it's like in uh, Ableton right this little info view box and it explains basically every button every tool every every little detail right so let's say I don't know what this one is and it shows exactly a little explanation right the west coast lpg represents the block block stack on the low pass gate a peculiar filter circuit or original designed by synthesizer like a legend on bookla for controlling the dynamic blah 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 right you get the idea okay so now i have already a little bit more clarity and again here the oscillator west coast dvg d WG combines two oscillators mod and carrier mod carrier and uh, additional wave shaping. You get the idea, right? Now, I this also gives me already some clarity, and then all the individual buttons. For example, this one. I didn't know what this little button here is doing, and it explains me what it does. Morphs smoothly between the four classic waveforms: sine, triangle, saw, and pulse. The result is sent from the out M up here from this button right really clearly I already get a clear vision a clear idea what I can do further with this little oscillator here right and it basically does it on every button right direction pitch ah, this is so amazing man I can hide those uh, cables allows you to set the glide time between pitches and I think this is really important especially if if we start something new a new skill set like I try to do right now and for me this is uh, yeah it's amazing really great really great so here is another very cool feature they already have some pre presets here tutorial presets yeah we can really go and dive in deeper analyze the patches right see what we can came up with maybe i don't know and again if i don't know what the function does i can hover over and then it tells me exactly what it does fm controls the amplitude of the signal arriving at the fm input and blah 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 right really handy the second reason is it's limited <laughs> and i like if things are limited and i guess creativity also likes when it's limited my brain loves it because if i have too many options i found i get overwhelmed and demotivated easily right so here inside the reactor blocks library i have uh, block space right some basic stuff here sequencer and stuff and if i want to add a module I just hit enter and then I search for oscillator for example then it shows me all the oscillators example this one and then hit and hit again enter and it's right there right just a little side note here but again we have bento box and here we have some some uh, base blocks right it's not that much but still we can uh, add euro rack react this one is the free version but uh, there is a paid one which uh, comes with another 140 uh, modules and to start with i believe this is enough you know we don't need thousands of modules at my fingertips and uh, this is the second reason why i choose reactor blocks instead of uh, vcv rack and again I, I love vcv rack right there is nothing bad about vcv rack i mean yeah it's a great software and i'm really grateful that the guy made it open source and everything but uh, for now for the starting point i really love uh, reactor blocks for several reasons so third reason another big one is workflow with workflow i mean it works flawlessly as a plugin inside ableton live right let's say let's just create a new midi track back to blocks patch there you go already there 
then I have the clock here internal external so ex external again means the clock is taken from DAW right and then as you could see when I load it straight away with a, an initial patch we already have loaded some utility utility um, modules right like the clock the note a little um, stereo mixer not really mixer but the level volume control again <laughs> you saw it <laughs> i forgot the name and i switched over it and it says what it is right correctly yeah really handy and it's sync right now i know that vcv rack there's a plugin version coming and i think it's announced since one or two years if i'm correctly i don't know but to this date of this recording the, the vcb rack plugin is still not released right and i also know there are some options to connect vcv rack with ableton live via the bridge but it's not officially available anymore but you can still download it somewhere on the internet but uh, you need to connect that shit right you need to make some audio channels and uh, uh, send the clock via an yeah it's a it's a bit complicated you know and here i just smack that over and then it's right there right and i, I can start getting creative and i found with vcv rack it's a little bit more clunky than um, like this here right with reactor blocks and i like quick and easy stuff and i'm glad to pay for such things and i also know a little side note here vcv rack that will work as a plugin will also cost around 99 bucks so we are already closer to the costs of reactor blocks as a plugin right and also i'm not paid by native instruments this is my this is my very own impression and um, my very own thoughts you know that i wanted to share with you if you wanted to dive in into modular right now another thing about the workflow it's also very easy to record audio right away into a new audio track and then I can possibly adapt it to something new right so I can evolve the patch to something new like a layer for example without really needing to change the window too much um, <coughs> moving over or whatever right so like I did here this is the, the base patch that I created quickly recorded it here new audio channel audio from reactor and then just hit record and then you can basically just um, yeah jam around and record everything like I like to do and then uh, cut out the good parts and then here again I did some texture stuff it's basically made out from this base patch right it's the same it's the same uh, sequence basically and I believe both work great together because the source material is the same right and this was really handy to make really quickly really easy and I'm glad to pay for such a thing if it works straight away right so another thing about uh, workflow is a little feature that the clock already has a swing and a shuffle function right so if we open again let's use that baseline again right here you can see the clock you can shuffle it so I can already add some swing with a little button here adding 5% whatever you like right you get the idea and normally I think if I use VCV rack I need to find either a clock with swing 
or a sequencer that has a built-in swing function like uh, this one here Ableton right and uh, really handy tool for me so I can make the, the, the baseline swing right away um, and dial in as much as I wanted to swing with the other parts already in the track and really also a handy tool regarding uh, workflow then another cool thing about workflow is it's um, NKS I guess it calls ready which means it's pre-mapped for um, controllers like uh, machine yeah it's pre-mapped and you can jam around with your hands and um, again it's really handy you don't really need to set up something crazy just plug and play right but to be fair I haven't used it with machine yet but um, I will test it out then the next cool thing about workflow I found is the simple structure of having the inputs on the left side and the outputs on the right side right it's always the same on every module also on third-party uh, plugins here tape delay maybe ins and outs and uh, yeah that's the part about workflow then the fourth reason it's a little bit uh, controversial but the reason number four is it costs money <laughs> yeah it sounds stupid or counterproductive but uh, somehow psychologically i found something happens if something costs actually money right little uh, stupid story here couple of years back I thought it's a really good idea to buy a motorcycle right so I bought that it costs quite a bit of money and I saved up that money and then every time when that weather was good I felt the urge to go out and drive that fucking motorcycle right but I didn't want it really. I wanted to produce music, but I knew deep inside, man, I paid so much cash for that fucking motorcycle. I should probably use it, right? And I found same goes with this um, paid stuff for plugins for reactor blocks, whatever it is. That's <laughs> at least for me the case, stupid example, but uh, I want to draw the picture here and yeah at least that's for me the case i don't know why this happens but i discovered this several times if i buy something and as soon as money is involved i have the, the, the feeling people respect it more and take it more seriously right so for example i mean those videos all videos here on my channel are for free and i just it's just, it's an assumption right I bet a lot of people, maybe you don't count on these people, but maybe people just watch it, watch the videos and think, yeah, that's cool, but they never really take any action, right? They watch it and then forget it. It was free anyway, so who cares, right? Now this is just an assumption, but uh, you get the idea. Now what if, if I would or if I charge 197 bucks for all those videos do you think people would take it more seriously I will bet my friend I would really bet a lot of people would then either <laughs> not buying it or watching them or then the, the ones who really want to they would go really seriously about them right so yeah just some stupid thoughts about this but again, this is another r reason why I've choose reactor blocks. It's maybe not the best reason, right? But uh, yeah. And by the way, if you don't want to pay uh, cash on reactor blocks, there's also a free version of reactor blocks out there that comes with around 24 modules, I guess. So you can check it out and test it and uh, play around with the presets like I did. That's how actually I came to reactor blocks by uh, using presets and stuff and I get got quite good results and then I thought okay why not uh, use it 
or make my very own sounds with it, right? So yeah, that's it. Let's sum, sum it up again. Reason number one, it also serves as a tutorial, really handy with all the little explanations of every button here and there. Reason number two, it's limited with the modules. It doesn't have as many to start with like uh, other platforms, right? Um, I think especially in the be beginning this is really important at least to me to not get overwhelmed and lose motivation. Reason number three, workflow. It works as a plugin straight away. It has an easy structure with the ins and outs that makes sense to me and to my brain. And it also has a shuffle function built into the clock already, like this one, right? And reason number four, it's a little bit controversial, but it actually costs money and creates a gentle pressure to act on it and put in the work and take it seriously, right? I mean, if you would buy a, a, an analog hardware rack and you would pay a few hundred box on one single module you also will take that seriously right so yeah so those are the four reasons why i've chosen reactor blocks to learn modular instead of vcv rack right the first three to be honest were my main ones and fourth is i think a more subtle one right so now this is important i don't say that vcv rack is is a bad thing I actually love it and I actually tried it several times to dive into it but uh, it just was too overwhel overwhelming to me right and for me honestly it's important especially in the beginning of learning a new skill set to have a, a rock solid system that makes fun and works so I can start becoming creative right away without worrying about setting things up synchronize to the DAW and therefore having too many possible breaking points right so yeah those are just my two cents on this don't take this uh, too crazy if you love VCV rack stick to it you know it needs to work for you everyone is different right there is no right or wrong in creativity workflow art in general right now, if you decide to go modular, to learn modular, um, I want to share my little action plan, how I would go um, and learn it, right? The most effective way I could think of. So, number one, I will get to know some basic stuff. And for that, I highly, I highly recommend using Syntorial. I made a separate video about this um, it's really cool it teaches you everything from subtractive synthesis every button everything and you need to listen and then repatch um, patches really simple but difficult trust me then second one second step step is I would find one or two resources that teach more about modular basics for me it's this uh, book uh, patch and tweak and also some online courses from Chris Mayer that uh, actually co-wrote this book right then third step choose a software software that fits your style and uh, current situation for me it's blocks because it's both a tutorial and a modular synth in one and of course the other reasons that I just mentioned before um, maybe this doesn't apply to you but uh, maybe it's hardware you know maybe it's VCV rack maybe it's um, what was that uh, modular system called a e modular I don't remember but it's a very cheap affordable modular system that is made out of cardboard <laughs> but it's a cool it's really a cool system i guess really nerdy by the way so then fourth step i would 
dive into some presets maybe look into them maybe watch some youtube tutorials to get some kind of inspiration this base patch simple base patch was um, inspired by a little reactor blocks explanation video and um, then evolve from there right and then fifth step evolving further in case I would feel limited inside reactor which I don't think will happen happen very soon but if I would feel like this I would either building out a small hardware rack with some modules and then maybe create a hybrid setup with reactor blocks and hardware or maybe I would switch to VCV rack if I really felt I need to and if the plugin version comes out, right? <laughs> and again, this is important. A little, a little quote from an interview with Colin Mar Martin from the bo book Patch and Tweak. Here he comes. I think it's a mistake to buy too much gear if you're still learning. And one more thing I wanted to share with you is we don't need to know everything. We just need to know enough to get results right easy okay that's it for this video again if you want to start a track i'll show you quickly my softbot snappy kick template it's right here let's play that with the bass line quickly <laughs> If you want to download this little rack here, go and grab it for free. It's uh, under the link below, you can download it. And you can really change the pitch, click, attack, everything. You can make it snappy, you can make it punchy, whatever you like. Um, I just call it soft but snappy, raw minimal kick because it was inspired by Petrin, Spirescu, Barak and so on but uh, here I made it a little bit more um, attacky right you can really customize it and yeah if you want a starting point for your kick go and grab it for free Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you next week for another video. And uh, hope it was helpful and inspiring. Thanks again. Cheers.